Hello, I'm Shannon and I'm a geek. You gotta own it, right? I'm an optimization strategist at Conversion Geek, and I work with Ovengate and their customers to increase conversion rates and grow their revenue. Ovengate's a digital commerce provider and affiliate network for software and SaaS companies. So needless to say, conversion rates are pretty important to them. Today we're gonna talk about optimization. Okay, so the title might be a little dramatic. You might not actually die if you don't optimize your website, but your business might over time if it's not growing year over year. Grow fast or die slow. And optimization or conversion rate optimization, CRO, is a real buzzword these days. But what does it actually mean? Optimize, to make something as good or as effective as possible. Sounds easy, right? We all have revenue targets for 2016, and we need our websites and our shopping carts and our landing pages to deliver. How many of you are planning a total site redesign this year? Show of hands. How many of you are planning to update, at least update your websites or your landing pages? Should be everyone in this room, right? When we make these changes, how do we know that the changes we're making are, are making our websites better? How do we actually know that the changes we're making are optimizing performance? The only way to know is to split test. Create multiple variations of the page and run equal quality and quantity traffic through the variations at the same time to see which maximizes performance. Conversion rate, AOV, RPV, whatever metric you're tracking. If we run a before and after test without split testing and just compare the results to last week, last month, last year, how do we know what's moving the needle? We might see an increase or a decrease after we make the change, but is it due to seasonal fluctuations, day of the week, promotions we're running, promotions our competitors are running, and so on? Don't think no. We can't optimize our business if we don't know if the changes we're making are helping or hurting it. Let's look at a couple examples. Movavi sells software for editing and converting photo photos and videos. We ran a poll in their cart using a tool called Hotjar to find out why customers were not completing their purchase. The, the poll only fired if customers left without buying. There's a lot of good feedback and some common themes emerged. 27% of shoppers said that they had concerns about, qual uh, about the price or the value. Our hypothesis, the idea we were going to test, was that reducing perceived risk about the price would increase the cart conversion rate. Here's the control, the original header in the cart page. You can see there's some payment method icons and a progress bar to show the three steps. This is variation A of our split test, where we added 24-7 customer support and 100% money-back guarantee. Movavi was already messaging the money-back guarantee upstream in the purchase funnel, but we wanted to put it in the cart where the shopper actually makes the purchase decision. This is variation B, where we changed the header to include a, a well-recognized security icon, Norton, plus the customer support number. And the final one, Variation C, where we combined the security icon and the guarantee. Which do you think performed best? Let's see a show of hands for control. Nobody. <laughs> variation A, okay. Variation B, and Variation C. Looks like the majority are going with C. We ran the test for 21 days until we reached 97% statistical confidence. Let's see the results. Variation A had a 4% increase over the control. Variation B performed almost 2% lower in terms of conversion rate. And variation C had a 5.5% increase, which is pretty decent you know, from one test if your annual revenue growth that you're aiming for is 10 to 20%. So, this means that having a money-back guarantee in the header is a best practice, right? We should all stop everything we're doing and run out and add a money-back guarantee. No. <laughs> but first, let's forecast the revenue from the test results. There's many different methods for forecasting. Here's the one that we use. 
we calculate the difference in orders if the winning variation were to receive 100% of the traffic during the test. So we take the additional number of orders per day, extrapolate that to the number of orders per year, and then multiply it by the AOV to get the incremental annual revenue. In this case, it was 161,000 from one split test. But, as I said, we can't just run out and all add the money-back guarantee to the header because what works with one site might not work with yours. We have to turn best practices into test practices and test everything every time. So we did. We went to another customer called Abby. They make scanning and text recognition software, and we wanted to, to retest or validate this re risk reversal idea. We ran the same risk reversal test this is the control. They already had the customer support number. And this is variation A, the challenger, where we had the money back guarantee. Now, Abby had a higher AOV, so we also added it in the price, in the cart, so it was in two spots. So the test ran for 10 days, equal amount of traffic to both uh, the control and variation A. Which do you think performed best? Show of hands for control? and a show of hands for variation A. Right, most people are, are guessing variation A, which was my guess as well. The control won by 2.2%. So this tells us Abbey shoppers were neutral or actually negatively influenced by a 30-day money-back guarantee in the cart. A pretty surprising result. So in this case, instead of forecasting the incremental gains from the test, we can demonstrate the losses we averted by split testing instead of just implementing a best practice without validating it. We use the exact same methodology as forecasting the revenue, but this time we're forecasting the savings in averted losses. And my grandma says, penny saved is a penny earned. So we save $203,000 by running a test for 10 days. So your optimization program can either be a growth catalyst or it can be a loss prevention program. But either way, you'll have a return on your investment. Let's look at another example. Workshare sells document collaboration software in the legal and accounting space. We just redesigned their shopping cart and saw a 36% increase in conversion. But we wanted to continue optimizing. We used a tool called called Formissimo, which tells you exactly which field on the form shoppers are leaving. And most people were leaving in the billing section where they had to enter their address. The hypothesis that we were going to test was, would shortening the form increase the conversion rate? So the control, the original forms on the left, and the challenger that we tested is on the right. When buying digital goods online like software, Credit card processors only need minimal information to process the transaction. So fields in the form, such as address and zip, are often not required. These are all the fields that we were able to delete, so the challenger just has four fields on the right. So which performed better? Show of hands for control? A couple contrarians out there? And show of hands for the challenger? Right. The challenger showed a 12% increase, proving that even lawyers and accountants like to fill in less paperwork. So does this mean we should all run out to our lead gen forms and reduce the number of fields without testing it? No. Even though it's common sense, you have to test everything every time, turning best practices into test practices. So we took this hypothesis to another client that sells antivirus and security software. The control is on the left, and the shorter form, the challenger, is on the right. What do you think happened? Common, common theme here. A 15% decrease in conversion rate by shortening the form. So obviously, we kept the control as the default design. Can you imagine if we just implemented this without testing it? A 15% decrease is pretty hard to swallow. So what does this all mean? CRO is highly unpredictable and very humbling. Yes, this is true. But here are the key takeaways. 
Firstly, test everything. And by test, I mean split test, not before and after testing. If you're making a small update to your site, try and isolate the change and split test that. If you're doing a complete redesign, start by sending 10 or 20% of traffic to your new site and then ramp slowly to 50% while you're watching the results really closely. Just because something's a best practice, it doesn't mean that it will work with your unique customer demographic. You have to validate it. Secondly, you need to build a business case for your optimization program. It's going to take resources and budget, and op often optimization programs are competing with other marketing programs like customer acquisition. So you can use your test results to prove the gains in a winning test or the averted losses in a losing test. If you quantify the ROI, the numbers will speak for themselves. And lastly, if you want to grow, you need to optimize. If you're not growing, you're dying. Optimize to grow, or optimize or die. If you're interested in more about optimization, I recommend Chris Goward's book. It's called You Should Test That. Uh, Chris Goward is the founder of Wider Funnel, a leading optimization agency. And his book's about $15 on Amazon, but you can get a free chapter here at youshouldtestthat.com. Also, Avangate's put together a great resource library on CRO. There's a lot of webinars and this um, ebook for CRO for digital marketers, and it's all free, and you can get that at avangate.com optimize. Also, a lot of us that uh, own optimization also own customer acquisition. So if you're um, in the SaaS and software space, this is a really good read, uh, and it's available on Amazon. So if you'd like to geek out with me a bit more about optimization, um, you can contact me directly on LinkedIn or through email. Um, and we have some time for some questions now. I think questions can go up to the mic in the middle. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Omit. I have one question that I have faced. I don't know, like a huge volume in Facebook and Google. So we try to do these kind of testings. So now, especially with Facebook, I have seen the traffic, even in Google also, it's very unpredictable. You know, like suddenly, like yesterday, like you got 300% ROI, one day you got 400% ROI, and suddenly it's 50%. Again, because, you know, social traffic or this, Google Display, right. it's very much varying. Mm -hmm. Now, I always have this thing in my mind when I'm testing and I'm sending two batches of traffic, even the same demographics and everything targeting, there might be a high possibility that those two traffic coming from same traffic source can have a very different flavor. So whole idea of uh, split testing or you know any kind of A-B testing is kind of fail if because we have to make sure it's the same kind of quality, which some traffic sources have, like pop source, you know. But especially the big stuff, my personal experience. So what do you suggest in that scenario to do? What tool are you using when you're doing your A-B testing? Oh, so it's my partner. We use something called Optimizely, something yeah, like that. Yeah, Optimizely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Great. we do. But this thing always hit my mind, you know, back of my mind that I'm sending same traffic, same timing. Right. Everything is same. That's the concept is. But still, as what I've seen, the ROI changes, you know, shift like on daily basis, especially on Facebook. Right. It's so huge, you know, it's unpredictable. If that is what happening with two of my tests, one is instantly they send something good traffic and one is bad, mm -hmm. and then Optimize will show that, oh, you got some great conversion on this, and, you know, unknowingly I'm implementing, which is not really good. So, yes. Yeah, so I'll. I'll speak to that. The tools that we um, use most often for testing are Optimizely and also VWO, Visual Website Optimizer. And in both tools, you can set up the traffic sources to be specific to a campaign. And so if it's a Facebook campaign, um, you can further segment um, and also look at the traffic in terms of the time of the day um, or, the, or the day of the week to help analyze and understand some of those fluctuations in the traffic. And that'll really help. But if you're, if you're having um, traffic sources coming in from different campaigns, whether it's 
Facebook campaigns or paid search or, or email or affiliates, it's pretty important to segment that um, so that you can understand the different behaviors of the traffic sources. Any other questions? Yeah. Formissimo. Yeah, it's a great tool. Um, they offer a free trial. And uh, it's, it's kind of like Google Analytics, but just for forms. They specialize in forms. Really recommend that tool. And the other tool that we love using is called Hotjar. Do, is anyone in here use Hotjar today? Yeah. So you can use um, surveys, polls. It also does heat maps and then cam sessions. So um, we used to use Inspectlet uh, because of the cam sessions. And now we use Hotjar because it kind of does everything. Yeah, I haven't done uh, done a lot with eyeball tracking. There's you know there's different different um, theories on how effective it is. Um, so we find the the cam sessions through Hotjar to be the most effective. And then I also use um, userdesting.com as well as a way for um, hypothesis generation because you can just pay for a couple tests. Um, it's like ten or fifteen dollars per test, and so it's a really great way to kind of get those ideas about um, why people are abandoning your page usertesting.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how do you overcome the problem with Hotjar in that case that Hotjar is slowing your website? Really slowing your website. Pa sorry, I can't quite hear you. Sorry, that's a little bit technical question, but mm -hmm. you said you're using Hotjar. Mm -hmm. The problem with Hotjar that we've seen is Hotjar is really slowing your website. So you really changing your website the user experience by adding for observation. Yeah, I think it depends where on the page you put the code. Um, we haven't seen a lot of um, degradation in, in page load time or anything, but I know that you can optimize the location of the code to help speed that up. Mm -hmm. Where ideally do you like to get brought in as an agency that comes to, you know, perform CRO? I mean, you, do you like to be in when they're, you know, really don't have their design, like, solid, and you like to come and, and implement your test results into that, or do you like them to have something that's had, you know, millions of impressions that you have data to look at? Right. Um, either way, um, most, of our, most of our customers have existing websites, and we help optimize them. But, um, but we also work with customers to do data-driven design, like if they're doing a redesign or they're building a website from scratch. Um, but most of the customers that we work with, they have some traffic and they have some analytics data, and then we can come in at that point. And it really depends um, on, the, the first step is always some analysis. So we look at the entire purchase funnel, and we might decide to start optimizing upstream, like homepage, landing pages, product pages, or we might start downstream right in the shopping cart which you know, has a direct impact on your bottom line. right? Like if you're increasing your, con your cart conversion rate by 5%, you're increasing your revenue by 5%. Um, so that's often a good place to start because there's low-hanging fruit, and it can kind of, the gains that you get can fund your optimization program in, in the future. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you said on the first test that you run it for 27 days. 21 days, yeah. 21 days, yeah. sorry. Is there a way to run a test faster, to have a little more uh, room for error? Yes. Yeah, so um, the test duration is 100% based on the amount, the volume of traffic that's going through the variations and the number of variations that you have. So the tools like Optimizely and VWO, they'll tell you when you've reached statistical significance. You see it every time you log on. And the rule of thumb is you want to be at at least 95%. So there are some times when I've reached 95% with a high volume um, traffic in five days. As a best practice, we like to run tests for at least 14 days to have two complete seven-day cycles run through because there are huge variations in the day of the week, especially with B2B. With B2C, you don't see it as much, with, but with B2B, it's much more cyclical. Um, I also, the other rule of thumb I, I follow is to have at least 100 conversions go through each variation. And so, it, you know, some tests we only run for 14 days, some tests might take, you know, as long as four or six weeks. Um, but we always wait for that statistical significance. 
If, we, if we're running a test that, say, that has the control and four variations, and we see early on that one or two are losing, like they're not contenders and the trend's not going to reverse, then we'll just disable those variations so that the traffic only goes to the contenders, and that helps speed up the test, and you get to statistical significance faster. Yes? Yeah, we just find that the data that we get um, from Formissimo just on the form part is more, is more um, uh, detailed, so a better granular level. But we use both tools. But when we're working with forms, we bring in Formissimo specifically. And we've tried using um, other tools, like even um, uh, Adobe Analytics. But you have to set up custom events and things for forms. Um, so Formissimo is kind of easier to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, some of the technical changes that are required to the split test, you know, what things are available in the product, how do you guys think it up? I mean, how, how does that work? Or are you just like, hey, yeah, I think we should, we should test this, and it's just kind of right. you got to figure out a way to accommodate this inside of the product. Yeah, so it depends on the testing tool that we're using. With, with Ovengate, when I work with Ovengate to op uh, optimize their sites, they're you, there's two ways of making changes. One is um, we actually make the changes in the testing tool, like a WYSIWYG, you know, where you can drag things around. You can also just write some JavaScript, you know, to, to deal with the, the back end. Um, and then on, on the other front, there'll, there'll be times where we'll could do a complete template redesign, and Avangate will actually build out that template. So it really depends on the commerce provider that the, person's, that the company's working with um, and how we integrate with that. But we, kind of work both ways. Question in the back? Yeah. You talked a little bit about landing page development. I'm sure you do, of course, some of your paid campaigns and stuff. What tools do you use? What platforms do you use? Yeah, so with landing page development, um, the best tool out there is called Unbounce for A-B testing. It's fantastic. And whenever we're designing landing pages, we really start and we actually design around the form. So if it's like a lead gen form, um, that's really the, the gist of the page. And then everything else we design around that. And there's something um, in conversion optimization called co cognitive load, where you want to make sure that the person reading it doesn't have to process too much information. Um, and that gets back to like the eye tracking that was brought up earlier. And so trying to keep the page as clean as as simple as possible. The other key thing with the landing page is you want the, the button, the call to action, to be really high contrast. It doesn't really matter what color it is. I know there's always articles about, you know, blue is best and green is best. That, that's, it, it, that doesn't matter. It, what matters is that it's high contrast to the background. Um, so using Unbounce, you can, they have all kinds of landing page templates, and you can design, uh, you can take one of their templates, or you can use their WYSIWYG tool to um, isolate changes um, in your own landing page. And then they actually run the split test for you. So there's no development required. It's, all, it's just a, a cloud-based service. Yeah. Yeah, so you would create the variations with Unbounce. And so if you wanted to test the, the wording on the call to action button, then you would have different variations within that, and you would run that test. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, great. Well, if, if you'd like to chat uh, afterwards, I'll be available here. Thanks very much, everyone.